Okay, now that you have your distances, we, uh, we can use them to do ordinations. And we'll cover three uh, techniques here. Uh, one is the non-metric multidimensional scaling. That's quite popular in MDS. So recently, the metric multidimensional scaling, MDS, is actually becoming even more widely used. So I added this to the curriculum here. This also goes by the name of principal coordinate analysis. And then um, just for historical reasons, because you can basically do it with a ruler uh, manually, uh, that's how it's all started. Um, that's a polar ordination. Uh, it's kind of cool uh, just to see how you could solve these problems. This was also developed by Bray Curtis. So there's a Bray Curtis distance that we just covered in the previous video. But then there's also a Bray Curtis ordination, and that is a polar ordination. So just not to confuse these two things. All three of these uh, techniques sit here. So our objective is complexity reduction, just exactly the same idea as PCA or canonical discriminant analysis. But in this case, the scale doesn't matter. So they are generally considered non-metric. Uh, with PCOA is kind of a hybrid between the two. But in general, they are simply alternatives to PCA, factor analysis, and so on. The idea is always the same. Um, in this case, there's an emphasis on the relative position of your points. The idea is that points that are nearby, they are going to be similar. Points that are far away uh, are the ones that are very distant. So the advantage of these techniques over those techniques is that those distances can be honored uh, in slightly better ways. So it's not perfect. You still have some stress in your ordination, but generally less so than in the rotation-based techniques. And um, so we already briefly mentioned how this works. So you can think of this as uh, having a blank canvas uh, that you can fit to your points and roll it out, or you can stretch it. For example, if you have outliers, they can be kind of a rubber sheet transformed into a more pleasing arrangement of points. And this, of course, becomes nonlinear. So the position of the points relative to each other, they are honored. But the distances per se, the absolute values, don't necessarily mean anything in the nonlinear version. So the, these two points, so if they have the same distance as these two points, that doesn't mean they share the exact same uh, distance. So it's more of a relative positioning. And um, so if you run uh, these techniques, one of the readouts is actually the uh, remaining stress that's in your ordination. So if you add more dimensions, you can uh, decrease that stress. So in, in order to figure out, like in PCA, how many dimensions should I actually look at, uh, you can plot the stress value over the uh, dimension. So you can specify, I would just want a 1D run with just one axis here. So I want to collapse everything on this axis. There'll be obviously lots of stress. And then you uh, go to 2D and to 3D and to 4D so you have to actually manually do separate runs in NMDS and then record the stress and do a manual plot. So unfortunately, there's no R package that does that for you, but that will allow you to see where there's an inflection point, so where the stress kind of tapers off, and then you can decide whether you need to look at three dimensions or two dimensions. So if you want to look at just two dimensions, then also specify a two-dimensional run for your NMDS. Otherwise, it will use that third dimension, and uh, there will be lots of things that goes on in front and behind. Uh, so if you want to squeeze things into two dimensions, then specify a 2D NMDS. So and that stress value really is only meaningful on the same data set. So you can compare uh, the stress among dimensions, but not necessarily between data sets. So there's no such thing as a value you should accomplish. So this depends on the data values and the number of variables. So that's, these are just internally meaningful for comparison. And generally, all these distance-based techniques tend to be trial and error-based algorithms. Um, so you basically do your rubber sheet transformations and you tuck a little bit uh, this way and you tuck a little bit that way and see if it minimizes the stress. Um, so if, if you have large data sets, this can take quite a while for the computer to figure that out. And because it's a trial and error algorithm, you also get a different results every time you run this. So one thing that's really uh, uh, very obvious is this is just a sheet of paper that uh, you can look at from very different angles. So every run of your NMDS will have a different ori orientation. So maybe sometimes the red points are at the bottom, sometimes they're at the right, sometimes they're at the top. So this changes with uh, every run that you do.
and uh, there are some workarounds if you don't like that so there's a meta nmds that usually starts with a pca to get into a certain orientation and then uh, searches for stable uh, solutions um, but it, it's a hit and miss so, so sometimes you just don't get the same solution again but this is how those techniques work and um, so yeah x1 and x2 values they don't really mean anything so it's really very much opposite to something like a factor analysis uh, where you try to summarize your variables in new dimensions so for that purpose uh, this is not useful so those vectors they rotate into new positions every single time so that that means nothing so your vectors are not optimized for anything but you can put your vectors on so they still have the same meaning this would be the correlations of your uh, component scores which you can read out just like before uh, with your original variables so that that all still works the concepts are all still the same it's just the way you arrive at your component scores that's very different but you definitely have to add your vectors or report your loadings in a separate table uh, for interpretation of this and the interpretation is just like in the principal component analysis so if you don't remember this uh, do watch that video, I think it was 2.3 again, where I explained the interpretation of those ordinations. So the second technique that we have in the lab is uh, principal coordinates analysis. And that's an interesting mix of rotation and distance-based uh, technique. You start with a distance-based ordination, so you can calculate a break curtis distance and you ordinate those. Uh, but the trick is and that makes it real easy so there is no special skill involved in this particular ordination is that you use n minus one dimensions so there's a perfect solution for this uh, if you remember we had this example with a triangle where we had three points right so i can always find a perfect solution to display three points in 2d without any stress so that's what you do in pcoa that's how you start with that sort of ordinations that gives you a perfect solution in n minus one dimensional space and then you run a principal component analysis on those dimensions so that's a very clever way to go about it so it's a combination of both metric and non-metric so your distance you can use a break curtis uh, that's not metric so that visualizes non-euclidean data so that, that is not orthogonal or anything uh, in Euclidean space. So your second step, that's a rotation where you actually uh, keep your angles intact. And so that in practice, this often gives very pleasing uh, ordination. I do like that technique and it also gives you the same answer. There's, there's only one solution, um, unlike the NMDS. So it also makes it very quick. So you don't have to wait for uh, big data sets to be processed. So the last ordination technique I'd like to mention is the uh, polar ordination. We don't use this anymore, but this is how it got started. So it was also invented by Bray Curtis. And this one actually you can do by hand uh, with a ruler and, and with very simple math, you can do an ordination. Uh, and that's what people have done when this started in the 1940s. So ecologists usually didn't have access to computers. So you start with a distance matrix, and this could be a Euclidean or it could be the Bray Curtis distance. And you look in your matrix for the biggest distance. So this happens to be between plot two and plot three in my particular case. So that distance of 5.6 units, that's your first axis. That is your X1. Then what you do is you kind of uh, collapse all your points onto that uh, axis, all the remaining points. So if I look for 0.5, uh, 0.5 is from 0.3 is 2.8 and from 0.2 it's 3.4 units away. And that's actually a little bit more, so the 6 point something, so there's more than 5.6. So I would have to draw a triangle and then collapse this point onto uh, my first axis to find the coordinate of 0.5 on my first axis. And so I can do this for all the points, so I get a dash mark for all my remaining points, uh, even in a big data set, that's not really a, a very big, big problem. So each of your points gets collapsed on that first axis with the biggest distance. And then my point 2 and my point 3 are out, and now I'm looking for the next biggest distance among all the remaining points in my matrix. And that happens to be the uh, 4.7 here between point 1 and point 5. And those ones I plot in the other direction, so those form my other axis. So I already know where they're located here on the first axis, so I'm, I'm put, putting them here and there. And that distance is 4.7, so that distance here would be 5.6. This would be 4.7.
and I do the same thing. So I now collapse all my remaining points onto uh, that second axis. So I get these dash marks here with the triangle. So sometimes you also have two distances that are too short. Um, so there's a gap in between. And then you just put your collapse the point in the in the center of that gap. So anyway, after you have the coordinates on both of your axes, then you can just plot the remaining points. So that's very simple and intuitive to get your uh, to get an ordination done with just simple math and a, and a ruler. And there's not a bad ordination technique. So even for uh, quite a high dimensional data set, pretty clever what these guys came up with uh, without computers. So that's why I like to mention it. So you can try these things out in lab five uh, that contains PCOA and NMDS.